Hey, I'm Jordan Dudek. And for today's video, I wanna do a little cinematography breakdown of my latest short film, Empathy, and give you a behind the scenes look of what it took to get some of these shots and hopefully show you how you could do the same in your own short film. I'll be breaking down the gear, the lenses, the composition, framing, color, all of that, and kind of just going scene by scene, showing you what I think sticks out, showing you what I think you need to know in order to get those same types of shots. And hopefully you'll learn a lot on the way. This will be a long one, but I think it'll be worth it. So stick around and I think it'll be worth your time. None of these scenes or setups are super complex or groundbreaking, if I'm being honest. Um, a lot of them are just really simple and kind of as we were going, we got what we needed. I had an idea, you know, for lighting as far as what it was gonna take and kind of blocking as far as where the sun was gonna be on certain scenes. So you do need to take that into account. It wasn't like I just pointed the camera and thought that what we had on camera looked good. Uh, definitely had to manipulate some stuff, but really some of the stuff was really simple. So. I wanna be able to show you how you could do that so you can get the most out of your shoot days when you're in a time crunch like I know that we all are, especially if you're a solo filmmaker. For this film, I was the director and the DP, so you might find yourself in that same scenario. So let this film be an encouragement to you that even if you're working by yourself or with a small crew, you can get some images that you're proud of because I'm proud of these and I hope maybe when you see them, you're like, yeah, you should be proud of that. That'd be nice, that'd be great. As far as gear on this project, I use the Sony FX3, which I use for pretty much all my projects. And it's not because it's the best camera, because really it's not. It does not have the best image. It doesn't have RAW, it doesn't have ProRes. On paper, it's not the best camera, but it's just the camera that works the best for me. You know, it's versatile in all different scenarios. And it's good enough for me because it's good enough for an $80 million Hollywood sci-fi feature film. So if it's good enough for them, Obviously it's good enough for me. As far as lenses, I wanted to shoot this project in anamorphic scope. So you might've noticed that when watching that it was a little bit more widescreen, it wasn't 16 by nine. It's just an aspect ratio that I like, and you could do that in post, even if you shoot on spherical lenses that don't stretch your image. Uh, but I use the Aviscope 1.75 times uh, amber edition. So that's why, you know, the flares are a little amber. I think all the flares that we got were from the sun anyway. So it didn't look unnatural if it was like, you know, a blue source that was shine in, give an amber flare. So I think it worked out. I like the amber flare on some of the anamorphics, maybe not all of them, but for the Aviscope, I like it. And then for the taking lenses, which is basically the lens that you have to put behind the anamorphic adapter, I use these Sigma Contemporary Primes, which are really just super small. I used a 45 mil, 65, and a 90 mil. They were just great to give a really clean look. The Aviscope already has its own character, you know, some swirl. Um, it adds obviously the oval bokeh and of course the horizontal flare. And to me, that was all I really wanted. I didn't want to use a vintage lens on some of the scenes because it might've just been a little bit too much and not as clean as I'd like. But looking back on it, on some of the flashback scenes, I wish I did use some vintage lenses just to kind of sell, you know, this more dreamlike emotion that the sim was just didn't deliver. I was able to kind of mimic it and post a little bit, but looking back, that's something that I would have done differently. With gear out of the way, let's get down into the breakdown. So this is the opening shot of our short film. You know, really beautiful, had to wake up 5 a.m. or something like that to get that nice glow. I think what I've learned in cinematography and just filmmaking is that sunrise and sunset, you might not necessarily actually want the sun in the sky at that point because it can get a little harsh. You can notice here, you know, the sun is obviously there and it's obviously kind of dancing a little bit, but it's not very harsh and it's not really on our subject all that all that much. Cause I think that adds a little bit too much contrast. Wanted a little bit more of a blue hour for this. So the sun is actually quite low. Like I would say more somewhere over there. And it just doesn't add too much contrast. It adds more of a glow in this image. And it's pretty much the same at the ends of our film right here too really wanted to mirror those images just to show, you know, that our character is part of something bigger than himself. Our character starts out somewhere and at the end, you know, they've grown in, in something. Nothing too special going on here. You know, obviously we didn't, didn't light it. It was just the sun that was lighting this, but in the back of our truck and I had, you know, the gimbal set up with the anamorphic scope, which was just, it was an absolute ridiculous setup. It was super top heavy. But yeah, nothing too fancy going on here. You'll notice again that the sun is on this side, glowing here. So yeah, when we go to these shots, 
you know, if we were shooting in the same exact spot that we were here, he would be completely front lit here. You know, all of this would be very flat and the shadow side of his face would be on the other side. So instead what we did is that we were running kind of towards the sun and a little bit off, which we weren't here, we were running on the other side. And I knew I wanted to get this framing of him, you know, moving forward in the frame and not backward because we could have shot it very similar and just flipped him. But I wanted to shoot it this way. So I knew that we were going to have to have the sun, you know, back here, peeling this way on his face, getting over here and not getting a ton on this side. So that's just something that when you're blocking out certain scenes and looking at what do you need for certain shots, I always like to know, you know, where's the sun going to be specifically if it's an outdoor scene. If it's an outdoor scene, that's really the only light that you got to manage unless you're, if you're adding something, but for here, we were just using the sun, you know, we're in a truck on a gimbal, not much else that you can control. So you just kind of had to run with, with what you had, but it's not an excuse for not being intentional with your lighting setup. And I knew if the sun kind of peaked, started peaking above the horizon, it was going to be really harsh on his face, which didn't want at all. You can have harsh light that's on your body, but you really want soft light to be on your face. So we had to shoot this one first because as soon as we came to this wide, he was actually starting to get some harshness on his face. But of course you're in a wide, doesn't really matter as much. But for those tight shots, make sure that it's nice and soft on the spots that you want it. And in the mirror shots later on with the group running, which is over here, you can see it's actually starting to get a little harsh on them. But it's not that big of a deal because they're not even showing their face or more showing you know, their body. You can have harsh light on the body, but soft light on the face, but we're not necessarily, not necessarily showing the face here. So it ended up working out. Of course, this shot was later on in the shoot. It was actually after we shot these wides, shot it in a completely different location and did not like the results. And as we were shooting um, some of the tight scenes, which I loved these tight shots, as we were shooting the tights, I like looked over and saw the sun was starting to peak up where I was originally wanting to shoot it, but there was like some Christmas lights and stuff that were being shown. You know, there was like a, there was like a snowman or something like over here. It wasn't that tall, it'd be a giant snowman, but it was definitely in the way and not something that wanted to be in our scene. So very lucky that looked over, saw this wide shot and ended up getting both of them, you know, them running and him running for our opening and closing scenes. I think they worked out great. All right, enough of those. We go into this shower scene, which again, nothing super special. Um, I ended up just gaffing. You can kind of see it and I'll kind of draw it. There's like a little tube light that was right here, just out of frame, just kind of splashing down and really backlighting. And we were in a white walled shower, as you can see. So we we're getting like a little bit of a natural bounce to come off and it was really soft, but wanted this to be more of a moody scene. You know, just wanted it to be more introverted, more thoughtful, not super high, not super bright, more just giving off, you know, that he's sad or at least thoughtful, contemplative, something along those lines. And there's nothing better than showing a, sh a shower scene. If you want your character to look like they're thinking a lot or, you know, just a really deep personality. That's, that's what we wanted to show. But yeah, I just ended up gaffing um, <laughs> this tube up here. Had a wide shot that was originally supposed to be in here, but just didn't like it and wanted to show more of his emotion. It ended up being too quick in the cut. So just wanted this to play out just a little bit longer and glad that we did. It looked pretty good. If you, if you ask me, of course, if you ask me, I'm going to see it looks good. And of course, showing the bracelet again, which was, you know, a big part of this whole film. Cause later on we go on to show that his fake daughter, because he's putting himself in his friend's shoes, gave him that bracelet and it kind of became a calling card for supporting her and her journey of, you know, fighting childhood cancer. So just wanted to show throughout, you know, that this bracelet was very intentional, you know, intentional placement here, very blurry, but intentional placement there, intentional placement right there. And then he lays down intentional placement three different times that you saw that bracelet. So if you didn't connect the dots there, it's nothing I can do. You know, it's nothing I can do as a storyteller to, to show you much more than what you're supposed to be looking at. Now, I, for this scene, I probably could have highlighted it a little bit more. It's, it's definitely pretty dark, but because it was shown so many times beforehand, I didn't think it was, didn't think it was that big of a deal. 
So for this shot, I got a lot of inquiries about how I got it and for good reason, because the inspiration shot that I had for it is I think an inspiration shot that everybody else has seen, which is from the town. It's Ben Affleck's movie. It's, it's a wonderful movie. Um, I actually haven't seen it, but I love the shot. I love the shot that they got of him in the bedroom, just kind of with the, you know, the city in the background, which you can't really tell in, in this one that there's a city back there. There's not really, it's kind of a white wall, even though it is blue hour. But yeah, a lot of people ask me how I got that shot. And funny enough, I've tried to get this shot like at least five or six different times and have failed at, at least four of them, in my opinion. I got lucky one time at this running film, which you, you might have seen that I did shoot, you know, a very similar scene. Um, ended up just, you know, showing up on set and I was fully expecting to have the light from outside and I don't even know how I was expecting the light from outside, but I was planning on it. Showed up, it was blue hour already, just put him on the bed, set up a lamp, um, and then set up a tube just to give him a little bit of lift with some diffusion on that tube and called it a day. And I thought it looked pretty, pretty good. So playing this whole shoot around blue hour and making sure that outside was the time of day that we wanted it for this particular shoot. So, I mean, it was like 4.30 at this time. So it was actually kind of, it wasn't midday, but it was not even sunset yet, but it was definitely overcast. So it already kind of had, you know, a whitish glow. And then in camera, just bumped up the, the Kelvin to like 6,000, just to kind of give a blue, um, a blue feel to the image. And then did the same thing on our tube that I used, which again, the tube just right here with a little bit of diffusion, like a bed sheet or something. I forgot exactly what I used for that. <laughs> Once again, an awful tube, I need to get better at drawing. But yeah, just gave some catch here, a little bit of defined light around him, soften it up because the tube can sometimes be a little harsh, even though there's like a plastic, you know, film that's over it. It's not very soft. So just wanted to give it, you know, a little bit of lift, all that it needed and had like a gray pillow here. So they're already kind of, you know, popped from the background. And in post, you know, just, I lowered the, I lowered down the exposure because in Cine L I did shoot in the dual base for this, but I exposed for 3,200. So I just made sure that my highlights weren't blown out when I was shooting 12,800. And then in post, brought it down uh, by about two stops because I overexposed by two stops. So in post, brought it down by two stops. And basically all that does is ensures that you have clean shadows. And that's just the way the Sony works. You know, the FX3, FX6, not too sure about the FX9 or the Venice. I've never really used them, but Cine L is just, how I've used it is kind of just a, mo a way to monitor what your image is going to look like in post by bringing it down or bring it up. Don't recommend bringing it up just the way the Sony is. You don't want that noise in your image and it doesn't handle noise super well, in my opinion. So I'd rather overexpose the image to the point where the highlights aren't clipping and then just be able to bring it down in post. In Cine L, when you bring that dial down to 3200, it's basically just showing you in post what it's going to look like when you bring it down. When you're shooting, it's still shooting in that dual base or whichever base that you're shooting in. Cine L will always shoot in that base. So kind of tested it out, honestly, for this shoot. I didn't really have too much expertise in it as far as what to do and kind of gave it a run for its money and ended up working out for us. So yeah, then when we go to the tights, it's the same thing. Just kind of raised up the tube a little bit just to make sure it wasn't in our frame. Here brought it down. It's this is a pretty flat image. I wasn't too happy with what we got here, but I needed to show that he was looking at that. I, ideally, I would have had more of a framing, you know, that looks closer to this because I like having depth in the image. And this was just a very flat image, but I just needed to show that he was looking again, placement of that bracelet. Again, I had to place that in there because it was really the only thing that was telling the audience what to look for in this story, which was that bracelet that really told the whole story because there wasn't much dialogue telling you what was going on. Might be a story flaw of mine because I wrote the story, but that's what it is. So I had to roll with it. All right, moving on. We got some flashes here. Added those in post to kind of give, you know, more of this flashback feel. This was a pretty simple setup. Uh, I'll go to the wide to kind of show what we did. So I had this bedroom and really like, you know, how we're framing up this, got a lot of vertical lines that are kind of pointing us into this image. I like it. And it was 
an overcast day, I want it to be brighter. I wanted the sun to be, you know, be out here and pumping in and giving us some, some harsh light coming through, but we didn't have that in that day. And when you're working with talent, that's not talent, which this baby is talented, don't get me wrong, but didn't have the time to set up like a big light, like a 720 or something out there. And even if we did have a, have the opportunity to set up a big light, I don't think it would have been too uh, believable that it looked like sun just pumping through shears, wanting to have the shear there just so we could blow it out, not to show what's outside. It was just like another house right there. So the shear helped us kind of hide that it wasn't sun. But normally, you know, you'd see a little bit more definition if, if harsh light was coming through and you don't get that in, in this image, but that's okay. We want it to be brighter because we want it to be a little bit more romanticized. And you know, when you're thinking back on things that are happy, you think of them as being sunny, not as being overcast. So that's just the unfortunate side. But out of frame, which I use this door, just kind of, you know, peeled it forward a little bit because we had a tube right here, surprise, surprise, with some diffusion, of course, to be able to make that tube just a little bit bigger and give us a bigger source of softer light. If your source is too small and too close, it's gonna be really harsh. But being able to, you know, make that small source bigger by bouncing it or having it pump through diffusion just creates a little bit of softness. And that gave Brennan, you could kind of see it on his hair here a little bit, which isn't isn't the best thing, but kind of makes him pop a little bit from, from the background and a little bit on her too. So if we go to our tight, of the baby right in here. So we have our window and that was giving us some natural ambience already, but you can kind of see in her eye that there's a tube above and it's the same tube and just kind of place that above like it was out of frame, but it was right over here, giving us some top light, but not too flat. You know, still had some shadows here, but you could tell, you know, the shadows are really soft. I really liked what we were able to get with that tube and and some of the diffusion. And it was a very similar setup when we come to our come to our tight here. He's in front of this window. You know, it's a flat image right here, but I knew that we wanted to end up with him looking here. It was a little too too much shadow maybe on his face on this side. I do like, you know, more of the Rembrandt that we get on here. Probably wish that this was you know, a little bit softer. Maybe uh, put another tube on this side and just kind of have it like a 1% or something and put some diffusion in front. But we had the tube pretty much, it was out of frame, but right here, blasting here. And it looks natural because we have our window right here that's blasting through. And even though it was overcast and if you looked like on a false color, this exposure is probably pretty similar to this exposure, which in reality, that doesn't happen. You know, you're looking at this frame right now and you see that window back me, it might even be blown out. But my face, you know, is not that same exposure. It might be close because I'm artificially lighting it. But in reality, you know, this, my face would be lower on the exposure. So it does work because there's motivation in the scene to show there's a window here. So it should be, you know, lighting him right there. It's just another tool, you know, to be able to light and give motivation because you always want to be shooting in the shadow side because it just provides a little bit more depth to your image and we're shooting in the corner as you can see these are the top of the walls so the corner was right about here and that gives you the ability to get a little bit more depth in your image if you're shooting right up against a flat wall you're not going to get much of depth behind you you want to be able to get as much depth as possible just to create an interesting image you know just like this talking head it's shooting more into the corner of my house and it just provides a little bit more depth, a little bit more interest versus if it was, you know, super flat. Sometimes you have to do that. And I'm sure there's a scene or two in here that, that it does have a flat image, but when you can shoot into the corner, that just provides, you know, some more depth and allows, you know, some separation of your subject from the background and provides a pretty image. And that's what we all want, right? All right, moving forward, some of my favorite scenes which are just natural light. She was adorable. Oh my gosh, she, she did such a great job. I'm just gonna play these forward. So beautiful. She actually did play soccer and that was a little late addition. The, the dad told me that she played soccer and I thought that was great. It wasn't, again, in the original story, they were just supposed to, all that I needed was this twirl to be able to showcase at the end 
that there was where the twirl. Show me the twirl. At the end, you know, there was a very similar twirl. And those were just a mirror. The two, just to give the audience, you know, a, a little cue that these are very similar. And the first one was in Brennan's mind, or our main character's mind. Whereas the second one actually happened in reality. But yeah, for this one, this is all I needed was just this twirl. But when he told me that, you know, she played soccer and I found out that our older actress played soccer as well, just thought that'd be, you know, a great little tool just to add in that something soccer, of course, if, you know, if Brennan is imagining, you know, this daughter growing up that it was his own, of course she'd be playing soccer. So I, th I thought it was a cool little tie in, but nothing, I didn't add, you know, anything to these scenes, you know, and that's credit to the FX3 and some of the dynamic range that it has, even though it's not the best and some power of dehancer of being able to pull back some of these highlights, you know, you kind of see it's, it's a little blown out here, not to my liking, but I did want to be able to show, you know, Bren's face, didn't want to lose him in the shadows. And fortunately we did not, but really it was just all about sun placement. Every single scene that you see here, what's going on? The sun is backlighting everything. It's not being front lit. You know, our act, actor here, actress, she's being backlit and you have two different exposures on her. You have the shadow side that we're shooting into and you have the bright side that the sun is hitting and that's giving separation from these trees, from this background. And that's telling your audience what to look at. So let's look at some of the other scenes, see if it's similar. It just might, it just might be. All right, go forward to this scene. Oh no, guess what? It's backlit. Provide some long shadows, provides a little highlight on that ball right there. It's also showing Brennan in the background, which is cool. But you know, it gives these legs a little bit of depth in our image. You know, not everything is the same exposure. You're getting these different exposures, which is interesting to the eye. Take those out. Let's go forward a little bit. You know, we're just getting like that little catch of the sun coming around, which is really nice. And this is very similar to that first image of our actress running, running in. The sun is hitting our main actor right here. And you're getting the same thing on her side because her hair is kind of coming down a little bit and the sun's catching it and it's giving us separation from the background. And it's not the best framing. You know, they're on the right side because they're moving around a lot. This wasn't a setup shot. I just told them to play soccer and I was going to capture some things that they were doing. Um, but yeah, it, it ended up working out because of the way that we framed up the sun. The sun was on the, on the right side. We were still shooting into the shadow. You know, even though when he's in the shadow, it's a very similar exposure because she's giving him some bounce with her white shirt. I still think it works, works out really nice. And we're getting, you know, a little bit of anamorphic flare coming in. Nice and, nice and romantic. Come through, see when he goes more into where our image is not washed out by that flare, you can tell that he's a little bit more into the shadows. But again, still the same thing. He's getting this nice rim light and that's telling our audience what to look at, which is him in this scene. It's the way cinematography can, can tell your audience what to look at. Same thing here. You know, sun is back here, pumping through. Get our shadows, long shadows, giving us a lot, of, a lot of things to look at, giving your eyes a lot of things to look at. And the next scene, same exact thing. We actually have the sun in frame, which you know, it's a choice because the FX3, again, does not have the most dynamic range. That's kind of why the shadows are a little lost here. I had to pull them up. It's not the best shot, but I did need a, did need a wide to kind of show where they are. Right now, I was just kind of showing them running in the field, but showing them in a front yard was beneficial for the story because at the end, you know, they're kind of in a front yard as well. But just having the sun behind our subjects gives so much depth to this image. You know, if it was flipped around, they would just be so flat and they'd blend in with what's going on with the trees and everything. But here, there's a lot of shadows that we're shooting into and they're even getting, you know, a catch from the sun to pop from this image just a little bit, pop from the background a little bit, get the grass, you know, a little bit of glow on the top. Even though it's not my favorite image, it still ended up, you know, being pretty nice. And I think, yep, same thing. She's running, get a nice little highlight on the ball. Get the separation 
with her legs, trees, the shadows, backlight, everything. Everything that you can, backlight it. And this wasn't even, you know, the best lighting. This was like three o'clock on a winter's day when, you know, the sun would set around five. Normally you'd want to be, you know, around four or four thirty for something like this. But in Memphis, Tennessee, where we shot this, you know, the trees block a lot of that light when it gets to about 4.30 where it is more of that orange glow. This was not, you know, a super orange day right here when we were shooting it, but being able to, you know, backlight everything, even though it was a harsh light, I still think it gave us, I still think it gave us a really pretty image. You know, she's getting backlit here. Get that nice little anamorphic flare all the layers really nice. That's what I love about the Sigmas is they don't introduce, you know, a ton of flare of their own. They're pretty flare resistant and just kind of let the aviscope sing and do its anamorphic thing. Kind of washed out a little bit, but it showed some emotion, which was good. You know, not a perfect image, added some halation, added some bloom, because this is the flashback scene. That's something I kind of forgot to cover on, you know, on some of these is that I had to separate, you know, this, these images from our flashback and did that in post, you know, through some bloom, through some halation, uh, through some, you know, white vignetting instead of black vignetting, just to give a little bit more of a dreamlike feel. I would have, you know, I do ideally shot these with vintage lenses just to give it a little bit more of a difference between the scenes that are happening in reality, but that's something that you live and you learn with. You know, I wasn't getting paid for this shoot, but it still is something that I would have liked to have done, but there's nothing you can do about it now, except learn and, and move on. So here's another bedroom scene. And this one's a little bit different than our blue scene, obviously. This one's more blue, a little bit more sad, a little bit more thoughtful, whereas this one's a little bit more warm, a little bit more upbeat. Uh, had some inspiration from Arrival on this. Actually, Arrival played a huge inspiration into almost all of these images. So pulled a lot from that. And that was a very warm image uh, that Bradford Young, I believe was the, was it Bradford Young? Shot this at around 4.30, so you see some blue glow. So once again, just kind of waited for that blue hour instead of you know shooting at night. And that's one thing with this scene that I think a lot of people when they're trying to shoot night scenes don't realize. And it took me a long time to realize this, is that you know it's not night out here. And if you go on shot deck, you go on frame set or, or whatever and try to pull up, you know, night interior or something like that. And when you look at windows, there's often like a really blue glow that's going on. Like even the shot from Midsommar, you see like this window and you see a sheer that's over it. It's very blue. Like when does that happen in reality? But for some reason our brain sees it and it's like, yep, it's night. You know, there's nothing wrong with that image. Um, so yeah, that's, what I've learned in trying to shoot night interiors is don't try to shoot it when it's pitch black outside because your camera is not going to be able to see that. I was shooting with the FX3 and it had nothing to do with the low light capabilities of that camera. It just had to do with how I was shooting it. So shoot more of those scenes when it's blue hour, give your camera something to see outside and then you're able to mimic that a little bit better inside. And that's what I've tried to try to do a little bit. So for this interior scene that is again supposed to be night, let a little bit of blue glow come in. You know, these were blacked out windows, but there's some blue that was coming in. I gave some nice color contrast. But as far as the light, just had a tube up here. Guess what? With some diffusion. And I promise it looked prettier <laughs> than it does right here. But it gave a little bit of orange glow on our actor right here. It was bouncing off down here to give him some, him some glow. He had some separation, you know, he was catching it. You could kind of see it on his hands. You can kind of see where the tube was coming in here on his hand. But it was bouncing off of this. It's so slow. Bouncing off of the bed to give him some bounce, which we could see in his eye. It was hitting her pretty harsh, but our levels were fine. And I was actually okay with this Rembrandt because if you're looking at you know, what is our inspiration for that tube light in the scene? It's this lamp, which just has an aperture bulb in it. That's on, I think the lowest setting. I was shooting once again in 12,800 dual base ISO on this for the FX3 and just 
pulled it down in post to make sure we have no clean shadows. And it gave her, you know, a nice little glow. She gave such an adorable reaction. Oh my gosh, could not have planned that any better. But yeah, super simple setup. And then I also had a black negative fill all around the image. Don't think I have a behind the scenes photo of that. But it was just over Brennan. And then came down on this side. So I was shooting over here. Kind of within the negative fill, the, the black floppy that I got. So then moving on to this image, you can see that we have, you know, the sun out here, got some lift, sun is pumping through, which it actually is. This was natural daylight that we're, that we're pumping through. And then what I decided to do, let's go to our, cause we've got a wide, I think coming up here. Yeah, we've got this wide. All I did was end up setting up a 720p, it looks like a person. <laughs> Ended up setting up a 720B with a Fresnel attachment that was just hitting him on the back, just kind of faking like there was another window, which there wasn't. The only windows that we had was one that was right here and one that was right over here. And then when we go to the tight, you know, right here, the light is right back here pumping right over here. So we're kind of getting, you know, a little catch, little catch, just faking as if there was a window right there, which there wasn't. And it was not something I was planning on doing. It was just when we, when we walked in there and kind of set up framing and, you know, what was going to look best, knew that this framing that we had with the window or with the door, you know, shooting in here, framing up our shot naturally and shooting, you know, into the corner of the scenes, just really like the lights, the way it was coming in, but he wasn't getting hit at all by any sun. So I just knew that he was gonna have to be, somehow he's gonna have to be lifted out of the image and have to be pulled out of this background. So the only way that I could think about that was mimicking the sunlight that was outside. So set up the 720B, had it on 3200, as high as it would go. And I feel like, you know, it actually gave us a pretty nice image here. Had a nice tight of product placement. By the way, my wife made these bracelets. So if you need a bracelet, she's your girl, except she's my girl, watch out. Uh, had to throw adapter on this. I think we just use like a plus one, um, which I love, what I love about using diopters and anamorphic is that it ends up giving you a little bit more bokeh. You can kind of see it. I think when we go to a tight of him, yeah, like this little flare that was coming in and a little bit more bokeh. It just adds a little bit more juice to your image. Yeah, how to use a diopter for this because you don't have very close focusing on your anamorphic scopes. But yeah, 720B just right over here. He's getting some natural bounce. We did end up negging out, you know, right over here. I think we had like two negative scrims there just to give them, you know, some shadow, some contrast that's going on over here. A lot of it, a lot of the stuff that we did in each scene was, was mimicked throughout, you know, backlighting, having some negative fill and then raising the shadows where we have to with tubes. You know, here you can see that she's really getting hit hard by that 720B that's over here. It's not a person, it's a 720B that's hitting her, giving her a Rembrandt. It's probably, you know, a little bit harsher than we'd like. We had to get the performance out of her and we didn't have much time. And I think, you know, the image ended up working out because we have this window that's in the mirror, that's kind of showcasing, you know, where she could be getting lit from. So I think it's sold. And there's a lot of contrast in this image and it was supposed to be contrasty, you know, it was a, this was still part of the flashback. There's some cool, like a little bit of sun coming through here. So I think it ended up working out, even though ideally I probably would have thrown a scrim just to soften this a little bit, but I think it worked out. And then a tight here. Moving on to this, it's a very similar setup. You know, we, we scrimmed out this window that he's being framed by. That's just, you know, sheer that we had and how to buy a few more because I've, I've lost them throughout the years, but had to, had to shear this up so that we're not losing our window. Um, still had a little bit of detail in there. And then guess what? Just threw a tube up with some diffusion, of course, and had it backlighting our main actor here. So you can kind of see that, of course I block it up. You can kind of see that 
on our main actor here, just kind of on their hair, just a little bit of backlight. And I wanted to give some separation of our subjects here, which you can kind of see because it's darker right there. You can kind of see some highlight on her face as well as right there. Um, not much on our doctor here because he's by this window. There's some already some natural things separating him from the backgrounds. And then we were kind of losing their shadow, their, their face a little bit into the shadows. So added some really tiny panels that are just bouncing off the ceiling that are on the same temperature, just to kind of raise it a little bit. It's a very low contrast image, but that's kind of what we're going for for this. And then we go to this scene. This one was a little bit tough because I had some overhead lights that we had to block out, which fortunately we were able to, but just kind of framed it up, you know, again, just have these leading lines that are just showcasing where your eyes are supposed to go as an audience. Ideally didn't want, you know, this to be as bright, which it was coming from our tube that was up here. <laughs> again, surprise, surprise. Our tube that is backlighting our subjects. The tube is up here. You can kind of see it's giving them an edge a little bit, not too harsh, but it was giving them an edge. And all that motivation is coming from this lamp right here. Yeah, that might not be super realistic that a lamp is pumping in and giving them all that level, but it was what we worked with and just had an aperture bulb in there and giving a really low, I think it was only like on 10%, but try to match these to the same temperature just to give us a really silhouetted, low contrast kind of look. I think it worked out. And then when we go to the tight of him reacting, kept that tube right there, which again, you can kind of see that it's hitting pretty harshly there. I don't think it was blowing out, but I really liked how it was catching on him and giving him a separation from right here. Have some like exposure steps in our image. You know, we have some right here, right here, and it darkens up a little bit over there. So just some, some interest to our image, but really needed to bring up his shadows because it was very dark right here. There was a wood door, if I go back, a wood door right here. So it was absorbing all the light and it wasn't bouncing it. We do have a white wall, but it wasn't directly from our tube. So the wood wall was actually really absorbing a lot of that light. So he was not getting much on the shadow side. So it had to end up getting one of those small panels that we used again and just had it, had a friend Hollywood it, which means just hold it, covered it in diffusion, basically a sheer, and then bounced it, bounced it off of this wall right here. So panel with diffusion, and it was bouncing off that wall to then rebounce into his face. And you can kind of see that in his eye. Had a little eye, eye light on here, which is really nice. If you do have a low, low contrast, low mood, low exposure scene, it's really nice to have an eye light because it really makes them pop out. You know, if there was no eye light here, it would be really tough to, to see what was going on and really want to see his emotion, which is tough in a moody scene. But I think we were able to capture it pretty nice here. Moving on to this, we were just in a car. It was supposed to be a setup shot, but didn't want to get in the back of the truck with another gimbal set up and try to manipulate an image and try to light it. It was honestly at the end of the day, I think it was the very last shot that we ended up getting, but just told her to, to look out the window and waited for an interesting shot. And for that, that's just, you know, when is she going to be backlit? <laughs> for me, at least that's, that's what it looks like. So you can see got a street light coming in, gives a nice, Nice little catch right there, but really liked it on her face there. You can see that that's her eye. It was blue hour. Again, it wasn't night. You know, this is right after sunset for us. Just gives a nice glow. It still kind of looks like it's night, but we were able to have, you know, some detail in our shadow, which is important. And I still shot this on the dual base of the FX3. So if you're using another camera, you might not be able to get an image like this, especially if you try to shoot at night. So again, if, if you have some night scenes, try to shoot them at dusk when you still have some light out and just fake it in post and maybe bring down that image a little bit, but I didn't bring it down all that much. For this next scene, nothing special going on here. Had uh, the 720, I'll try to actually draw a light this time. Had the 720 here in a softbox with a grid just to give him 
some catch with inspiration from these street lights and then had a blue tube that was it's hard to show it on the frame <laughs> that's not a tube had a tube that was pumping like 5600 for a shadow because we didn't want to lose him fully in darkness on camera without that he was about as dark as this jacket was and really didn't want to lose that that's one thing that I think goes unnoticed when shooting a dark scene is that you do light your shadow side. You want to make sure that you're not losing all that detail. You can bring that down in post, but it's really hard to bring that back. And for her shot, it was pretty much the same exact thing. I did have a floppy over her, so it was a black. That looks good. Yeah. A black negative fill to kind of block out everything that was hitting her from the top and the side to give, again, the shadow side did the same thing on our main actor, on Brennan. And then, you know, I had the 720B right here on like 2% to catch her. And then had the tube on this side, had a friend Hollywooding it to give us, you know, a little bit of shadow right in there. And it gave a nice little col color contrast too. Because if you look, you know, at our sky here, it was a little bit darker. I think we actually ended up shooting this at night because uh, did want a darker feel for this, not necessarily dusk feel. But this blue that's going on here matches that blue that's going on on the shadow side. So I think it, you know, pretty believable. It's believable to me, at least. And of course you get that, you know, anamorphic bokeh that's going on in the background. Just looks so good. And we got it on his as well. Thank you, Aviscope, for making my image look that much better. Moving on to these scenes, this was very s incredibly similar setup to what we were doing at our bedroom scene here. Didn't like the way that this, this one ended up as much. You know, sun actually was barely down. There was two windows in this room and this one that was over here was actually getting hit by sun. So it kind of had to neg that out. It was more of a case of, you know, our actor didn't really want to, our actress didn't want to, have the, the oxygen tube in, in her nose for too long. So it kind of had to move pretty quick, but it was the same setup, just had a tube that was up here with diffusion, just to give a softness. And it was almost a top light, but you could still see, you know, she has some shadow going on here. And this was giving her a little bit of bounce into that, but just a low, low mood you know, didn't want to lose her in the shadows, wanted to give her a little bit of lift. You know, when you're doing low light, you still need to light. And that's probably the thing that you need to, to take from this. I didn't love this image, but at the end of the day, when you're running so fast, there's only so many things that you could do with the image. So this was one of those things that just kind of had to roll with and kind of had to do what we could in post to make it look the way that we wanted to. But yeah, you can see like this window, you know, a little hot for what's supposed to be nighttime, but that's okay. Still, you know, had the same framing, you know, pushing in here. Did a little push in, probably shouldn't have done a push in, probably should have done, you know, coming out of the scene because our next scene, that's a mirror, ends up coming in. You know, that's okay. You know, it's, it's not the end of the world. Wanted to really try to mirror these scenes as best as possible. And I think it sold, you know, I think it sold that all this was happening in his mind, but really wanted to frame these shots up pretty similar to each other. Again, using the door to frame up your shot, tell your audience where their eyes are supposed to go. And this whole scene ended up being, you know, one of my favorites throughout. And it was all, it was pretty much all natural. We just waited for, well, didn't really wait. It was just an overcast day, which gave us a lot of flexibility to be able to have soft light where Normally we would have to add that ourselves, but it was already there. I like having this window here and him kind of being in silhouette with a little bit of light coming from this window, catching him here. There's just a lot of interest going on. I love the different textures. You know, I love the wood that's right here. I love the brick. And of course the green walls just help a lot. These plants getting some catch light and of course the bed getting having some contrast that's going on there. Just a lot going on in this image that I think makes it work and makes it look pretty. I think this was my wife's favorite shot. 
Then come into the tight. Look at that bracelet. It looks so great. I don't even know if we did anything to this image. Of course, we framed it up. We moved him a little bit closer to the window. He's a little bit further away. We pushed him in a little bit closer just so this window here would light him and his arm again to give him separation from the shadow that's going on in, in there. And I, this was actually pretty dark. I think we were probably actually losing, you know, the shadow here, but it's not the face. So I wasn't as worried about it. I wasn't as worried about losing it. I knew that audience was supposed to be looking right here. So I didn't worry too much what was in the shadow because they weren't supposed to be looking, you know, at the base of his, of his hairy arm. It's not that hairy, Brennan. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. But then when we go to his face, it's a little bit more important. You know, I didn't want where you're supposed to see things in focus. I didn't want that to be too lost in the shadows. Very similar frame. You know, we didn't move too much. Moved him close to the window, of course. Had like this, you know, checkerboard-like um, exposure. So, you know, you have lights, you have dark, lights, dark, and then light. That's an interesting image. And we had some natural rim light that was going on. But, of course, we added a tube light and we had some diffusion. So it was a diffused uh, light that was mimicking our outside light. For this, because it was a little bit green outside, you know, the tube lights that I use, the man lights, they go a little magenta. So instead I go, instead of going on the, what is it, the CCT, I go on the HSI, which is the color mode and I go on green. And instead of having it, you know, super dialed on the saturation. I pull that down a lot, maybe on like three or four saturation. And that takes away the magenta of that tube. And it gives me a light that looks pretty similar to what's going on outside. And we're not getting any funky magenta going on in the skin. But yeah, so that tube is what helps just raise the shadows just a little bit. It still is a pretty contrasty image and I know that, but for the mood that we were going for, I think it really ended up working out pretty well and didn't have to add a negative fill to this image because it was such a big room. As you can see over here, ceilings are probably even 10 more feet up and we weren't getting bounced because you see, you know, you got a black fireplace here, you got green walls, you got brick, you got wood, you got this, this, I, I brought it in, but you got this gray, you know, bed cover that is just going to absorb light. And those are the kinds of things that you want when you want a moody image that's not gonna be, you know, high key, you know, like a reality TV show or Desperate Housewives type look, you know, one of that moody contrast look. And that's what we got. And then we go to the soccer scenes again, you know, sun's over here. It's not exactly backlighting, but it is enough that there's still a lot of contrast in this image. You know, she's getting caught here. There's two different exposure levels on her, two different exposure levels on this ball, highlighting what's going on here, which is kind of a little foreshadowing of what's to come in this image or in the story. All right, take those away. And then guess what happens? I need to backlight her again. So I tried shooting in the same, same direction. You know, if, if she was running in this, you know, running forward in the scene, what I could do, because I'm behind her, you know, right now, I could just go to the side and shoot the same frame. But I knew that the way she was gonna get lit was a little bit too front lit, and it was actually shooting up against a house, wasn't an interesting image. So instead what we did for this shot, we ended up going over here. It's not the 720B, it's actually, it's actually me and her. And I had her run this way and I was following her and the sun was back here backlighting her because backlight is our friend so you know backlighting getting this nice anamorphic flare getting nice separation from the houses on her just again separates her from the background and then we cut to very similar framing of her trying to juke at her dad. And of course her dad picks her up. You get a backlight, sun is over here. 
Nice little anamorphic flare coming in. Oops. Anamorphic flare. Still backlit here. So one thing I want to point out, so you can see, you know, sun is literally right there because you could tell the way she's being lit. There's going to be a catch if she brought her eye, if she brought her arm down, you could tell, but you could tell on her arm here, right here, that the sun again is right there. Now, if we just left them where they are to shoot this next scene, he would have been crazy front lit. So the sun again, Sun is right here. But then when we go to this, you can see the sun is now behind him. That's just the way that we wanted to shoot this. You know, I ended up putting a bounce right here, had to make the decision of where we wanted to set them up. Wanted the sun to be right here. We knew that we were gonna bounce the sun to give him a lift on his shadow, but he would have a catch on the side of his face where the sun is coming in to have two expo exposures on his face. I think this one's a little bit of a better example. Yeah. You can see the sun, you know, it's right over here. Giving that catch on his side. And you can probably see in his eyes that we had our bounce, big six by six ultra bounce that was then lifting up the shadows on his side. Then when we go to her tight, you can see the sun was actually in a very similar placement to where we were here but we just decided to throw up a scrim with some diffusion, six by six, to make it really soft. And we get really nice roll off, really nice roll off of the exposure coming in here. You know, if we just decided, you know what, we're just gonna shoot this natural, it would have been really harsh on her face. It would have just not looked like a good image. Ideally, I would have loved to have, you know, some harshness on her here and then soft on her face but that's just not something that we had time to do. But just because you're shooting natural light doesn't mean that you don't manipulate the image. And that's kind of what I want to show you here is that we were intentional where we were shooting, always making sure that we're backlighting or if we are front lighting, like we were here, because you can't backlight every single shot, especially with dialogue. You were shooting dialogue here, so it can't be backlit for him and for her. That doesn't make sense in the way a story goes. So she was gonna have to be front lit, but we knew that we were gonna scrim it for that. Just stuff that you have to think about when you're blocking with your director, where are these people gonna be? You don't want you know, them to be completely front lit or the sun to be on the side that you're shooting because then you're not, you don't have any depth in your image. You know, even though we're bouncing here, there's still you know, a little bit of shadow there. It still falls off you know, into a shadow. There's like three exposures on his face here, which is good. That's an interesting image. You know, we're still shooting kind of to the shadow of these trees. His face is still brighter than what's going on over there. Maybe not the grass, but I could live with that. I could live with that. And he stands up. Oh, he reveals Brennan. Oh, wait, what? Our main character? I thought he was the dad. You'll have to watch the story to, to understand that. Nothing special going on here. We have the scrim. Scrim is right here to block her because I didn't want her to be, you know, super bright because the sun was still coming in. So it still need to have the scrim there. So then when we come to Brennan, we see that he's pretty bright. So I just want you to notice that. I don't think it took anybody out of the, out of the story, but then when we come to him, the exposure's not the same because we added the scrim. Because when you go to your tights, you can move everything in. You know, I only had one or two six by six scrims. I didn't have, you know, like a 40 foot scrim that we could put up to block all this. And I think that's okay. You know, I see that all the time in Hollywood films is that on the wide shots, you know, there's harsh light coming in on people's faces where, you know, that might not look the best, but then when, we, when they go in for the tights, it's not that way. So when he turns, you could see, you know, scrim is right here to give him a softness. This isn't a traditional way to light. Um, and it's not a traditional way to do dialogue, but you know, the girl that they're talking about she ran off over here. She ran off in that direction. So they're facing here, talking about her. So she's almost the third character in this scene because they're talking about her. 
So we could have shot this scene a little bit differently, but I wanted that sun to be back there to still kind of backlight them a little bit because I wanted this character, Bubba, to be backlit. Which we can see over here. They both have a similar exposure to them, which was just the scrim. And honestly, this was a case of us running out of time. And when you're running out of time with people who aren't full-time actors, you don't want to stress them out. You just want to stress yourself out, which I do all the time. So we kind of had to move a little bit quicker than we would have liked. If I had to do it all over again, I would have kept, kept the scrim there or just replaced them to keep the sun kind of pumping in behind them and then just add a 720B pumping through a scrim just to give some exposure, some separation. On this side, have shadow here and then have a very harsh backlight there. Again, not something I can do right now. And I would have done the same for our main character here, even though I do like this image. You know, I do like how the sun's coming in here. I think there is some, some good contrast there. There's not three exposures like I like to have on the face. Like there's not really much of a rim, but because of the, the sky over here, you know, he is separated from the image a little bit. So I can live with it. And then we get him looking down. You know, this is all the same, all the same here. We, we had to cut in between because we had to set up the scrim for different stuff but it was all the same. You know, we had the scrim right here for this shot. Then we had the scrim right over here for this shot. You can see on the exposure that we were losing the sun a little bit on our main character here. We shot all of our dialogue of him when we knew that we were gonna have the sun for him. And then when we knew that we were gonna have the sun for this actor, that's when we shot his scenes. So when we got our reaction scene right here, when he's looking down at the product placement, the wristband, we lost him in the sun, that's okay. That was just something that, you know, again, you can't control it. If we could have done it again, would have thrown up the 720B on some on some batteries and shown it to his face, but can't do that all the time. And again, product placement. Just to showcase, bring it all, tie it all back in that the bracelet that the daughter made was not for our main character, but it was for her dad. And he's the real dad in here. Just wanted to showcase that, that he has the bracelet. It's the calling card again for, childhood cancer in this particular story and supporting the future research and treatment of it. In this particular scene, how to use the adapter, which gave a little bit of like a funky flare, kind of muted it a little bit, but you can kind of see like, you know, it's got like this little oval that kind of, you know, expands a little bit and detracts a little bit. Look good, some extra juice, you know, nothing wrong with that. And then from this scene, we then cut to the group that has the bracelets just to kind of showcase because the dialogue is you know we got a lot of people supporting us and showing us their support and he also says and and that's how we're going to get through this is by the people supporting us so yeah i think it all ties it back in this is a mirror shot of our main character when he's running he has the bracelet right here it's just to showcase you know there's there's more people with the bracelets that are joining the fight and that's what the whole story was about. It was about empathy, it was about running in someone else's shoes and, and how you can help those that and carry their burdens and help them in those. And then again, our closing shot is very similar. You know, I'm in the truck, um, have, the, have the gimbal above the cabin of the truck, trying to hold it as steady as I can on the 65 mil. And yeah, again, it's a mirror shot of our, of our opening. And I think it worked well. But yeah, that's pretty much it for cinematography breakdown for this short film. Um, as you could tell, there was a lot of natural organic stuff that was going on. It wasn't huge setups, wasn't big lights that we were using. If I was using the 720, it was like on 10% in most cases, except for one. I think that you can do a lot of things with your own equipment. I think you can get a very similar look to this. It just takes some intentionality on your part to make sure you know where the big, the big source, the big free source that we all have is in the sky and how to manipulate that. And that's what we did for this. Made sure that it was, you know, in frame when I wanted it to be and out of frame when it needed to be. Most cases out of frame is best for, you know, the kind of consumer cameras that we're using don't have all the dynamic range in the world. But yeah, I think that's what I'm learning in this is take the time to, to plan out those types of scenes. If you don't have all the resources in the world, um, 
typically on Hollywood sets, they say don't rely, you know, on the sun. But if you don't have access to M40s, like I don't have access to those big lights or even a 1200 or the new 2400 LEDs that are coming out. If you don't have access to those, you got to use what's free to you. So learn how to manipulate that. Um, and I hope you got something from this. But until next time, thank you. Thank you for being here. I love you.